Diverging lenses are full of surprises. This double concave lens, I could draw you an M-ray, right? I could take an M-ray and come in here and hit the line of action. Dang it, I need a line of action first. Why doesn't my assistant set up the line of action? Shoot. If I come in here and hit the middle, it will be possibly displaced a little bit, but certainly not angularly bent. And that is the direction that light will actually pass right through that lens. This is my M ray. Then my P ray comes in here in green, and the P ray C is supposed to come in parallel. Can we draw it? Yes, we can. Can I draw it? Yes, we can. Can I draw it? Yes, wait, where does it go? Now, remember, you might think that it's gonna head for this focus, but that seems to be a converging kind of action, because then you'd have a ray like this, and it'd be all like converging with that purple one, but that's not what these do. Remember, this kind of lens does, it does this. Remember that, always, at the line of action, this kind of lens causes a divergence. Aha! Unless, unless the light's coming from over here, then it, Wait a second, that is a divergence also. If they're coming from over here, and then they hit this lens, they were about to converge if the lens hadn't been there, but no! The lens steps in front and says, no, you will not converge, you will go on parallel for all time. So it's always a diverging lens any way you slice it. Cool. Now, we know that it needs to diverge, so it can't head for this focus. It's gotta look, it's gotta look as if it came from this focus over here. All right, so it's gonna be all like, Bam, and gone. And the next ray, what do we call that? The P ray, because it's parallel? All right, and then we said the blue ray comes in here. Hey, that's a thing. Look, here the blue ray comes from the object and goes towards F. Wait a second, why didn't I choose this F right here? Well, I'll tell you. These guys have negative focal length. The focal length is on the other side, so I aim for this focus. I don't know, you'll get used to it, whatever. Then a go like this and I hit the lens. At that point, I kind of get the feeling that the blue's gonna be in between the green and the purple, and the way to do that, remember your F-ray comes out parallel. It goes towards the focus and comes out parallel, so nobody will be surprised if I make a horizontal line right here and call that the continuation of my F-ray. Awesome, now, if you put the great green eye of physics over here and you are looking at these rays, you think to yourself, those rays came from a certain place and you wonder where they were, right? Where was that thing that seems to have caused these rays to emanate? And you think the green ray came from that dotted line that I just drew and you think the blue ray came from this line that I am drawing now and you think that the purple ray came from where it actually came from. Shut up! The M ray doesn't turn at all, so it looks like it came from where it really is. What do you want to do, make a dotted line on top of the purple? I guess you could. I don't really think that's necessary, but the purple, see, the M ray actually goes where it came from and was where you thought it was when you look at a mm, lens. Watch this. That is my image. Notice how they all beautifully connect right there. And an eye over here observes rays diverging as if they originated right there. Let's do another one. Does it stress you out that I put it right at the focus? Let's just deal with it, see what happens. Can you deal with it? Can you deal, let's see what happens. All right, I'm gonna give you an M-ray. The M-ray comes in like this. Is this recording? What the heck's going on here? Yeah, M-ray's like, pow, and gone. Go on, there's a P-ray. Want a P-ray coming in here parallel? It is late on a Friday afternoon and I should go home, but we're just gonna do this P-ray, comes in parallel. And now, what are we supposed to do with the P-ray? I forgot, dang it. It comes in parallel and then heads for the focus, but it can't head for that focus, right? Because that would be converging. So I'm gonna say that it came as if it had started at the other focus. That's kind of weird. Is it okay with you if I just draw the dotted line that see, it's going that direction, so it seems to have originated back here. Can I just put that on there right now? It seems to have come from somewhere along that line. Since I had the ruler there already, I think that will be okay. And the M-ray, of course, seems to have come from where it actually did come from, cause it doesn't bend. And then I could get you a 
an F-ray. And the F-ray is aiming for this focus because it's the focus on the other side. The focus on this side doesn't mean anything because that's F prime. The focus is on the opposite side of this kind of lens because it's really weird. Get used to it. Check this out. We'll go in here trying to get to that focus and we can't. We hit the, the line of action of the mirror and uh, oh, that's a lens. Great. And then we go this direction. We're all like, pow! And it's out like that. And look! These three rays are diverging, and they seem to have come from, oops, I forgot to do where the blue seem to have come from. See, the blue seems to have come from somewhere along this line right here, and we don't quite know where, oh yes we do. Look, there's your object. Here's your object, this is the height of the object. Here's your image, I misspoke. This is your image right here, and it is smaller. Wait a second, what did we have on that last one? Oh, it's gone. Just kidding, found it. We had a smaller image than we had the object, and it was virtual because light wasn't actually, ooh, light wasn't actually coming from there, but it looked like it was coming from there. And there's not actually rays lining up t together here. They're not focusing. There's nothing like that. So don't be concerned if somebody puts an object right on F prime for a diverging lens because the focal point's on the other side. You can't, de you, I mean, you can't run into a problem. You could try, but you can't run into a problem. Let's do one final one. I'm gonna put it inside the opposite focal length. I mean, I can't get inside this, <laughs> I can't get inside this focal length because if I put my object on this side, then suddenly that becomes the focus. Every time the focus is on the opposite side than you're working with on these kinds of lenses. So let me go through the three rays and we can finally shut up for the night. Watch this, line of action, sorry, line of action. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Line of action, and it's supposed to be M-ray coming in here all like, Pow! And then I'm supposed to get myself a P ray, which is coming in parallel, and then it's gonna be like, pow! It's coming in parallel, and then I can't aim for that focus. It's as if it came from this focus right here. Whoa, this is going to be extreme. Wait a second. No, it's as if it came from there, from the mirror, so it's like this. Bam! And the purple ray? Well, the purple ray is just going the way it was going. Ain't no thing. But then we've got one more ray, the blue ray, and we're supposed to say the blue ray aims for this focus. Not the one over here, but the one over there. The blue ray aims for that one. This takes some practice. You should practice it. And then it comes out parallel, like this. Okay. So, where did they come from? How about the song Cotton Eye Joe? Man, I am sorry that that just got in your head. Da, 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 so that's where the blue ray seems to have come from. Where did the green ray seem to have originated? Well, the green ray seems to have come from somewhere along this dotted green line, and we see that they all three meet at a single location, and we identify that as the location of our image. Notice that this is the height of the object, and here is the height of the image. And lo and behold, let's watch this pattern here. Here we started really far away from the opposite of the focal length or something, and the image was really small and virtual and on the same side of the lens as the object. And we got closer, and the image got bigger and more similar in size to the object and closer to the object itself. And as we continue, whoa, the image is getting even closer to the object itself and approaching its size. So very much like, well, you make your own conclusions. Make your own conclusions. I'm going home. What I mean to say is, think. Thanks. Bye.